Dragon Ball Super Episode 38 Review. The episode is titled Universe Death Strongest Warrior Meet the Assassin Hit. Now, first of all, I want to start off with the animation. The animation in this episode was really, really good. Now, a lot of people are saying if you freeze frame it, frame by frame, the animation quality does decrease. But don't, then just don't do it. The animation itself, while watching it, is really good, it's fluid, and enjoyable to look at. And that is what I think is important. I don't think what the frames look like individually is important, because one single frame isn't really meant to look good. The episode is meant to look good, but not the frame. The whole episode when put together is what needs to look good. But now let's talk about the actual content in the episode. So when Vegeta and Hit enter the ring and get into their fighting stances, the first thing Vegeta does is mention that Hit's fighting stance is very basic, and he starts getting it. But then he realizes something. There is no opening. So right off the bat, Hit is dangerous and very powerful. And we know this for the fact that not even Vegeta or Goku or Piccolo or Jocko or anyone can find an opening in his attack. So Vegeta eventually attacks and Hit uses his time leap technique that allows him to skip ahead in time by 0.1 seconds and just hits Vegeta. So he actually disappears and reappears. He, it, but not like he's moving very fast. It's just it, it's like he just moved. But no one else could see it happening. Because he he froze time and moved while time was frozen and it hit Vegeta. So he hit Vegeta and he knocked him in a vital point and knocked him back. Now if you're a Vegeta fan, this episode is not for you. Because hit just starts beating the hell and crap out of Vegeta. And it is actually a really sad sight. He had beat them up and Vegeta realized that all of Hit's attacks had been light. He's not hitting him with a lot of force. So he hit, so he charged at him. He just tanked one of his attacks. He tanked it. And then he's like, ha. And then he grabs his arm. And, and then when he's about, he tried to hit Hit. Well, that's trying to end that 10 by that. Vegeta tried to hit Hit. No, yeah, but he tried to hit him. And Hit just increases the force in his other punch that is still in Vegeta's stomach. And Vegeta's eye, when you see his eye widen, he just like, what the hell, a heavy attack? So he got hit with after he was holding back against Vegeta. The heavy attack knocked Vegeta out cold. Now this is where things get interesting. So Goku, before the fight, tells Krillin to give Vegeta a Sensu Bean, and Goten and Trunks and Bulma all freak out. Goten and Trunks actually fly down. To make sure he's okay. I love stuff like this. I feel like it's really good for Vegeta's character to really show how he has a loving family. I really, that's a, very important for Vegeta's character. But that was kind of cool to see. Now, we also get confirmation that they have Sensu being with them. I was very surprised that they had Sensu being with them. I did not see that one coming, but okay. Now, what I do want to talk about is something else. Something very interesting, which is. Goku and the Goku conversating with Jocko and then fight with Hit, of course. So Goku and Jocko have a brief conversation and Goku pretty much like, can you see a movement? Uh, Jocko said no, it's like he's becoming invisible, but, and, but, but then I would see his clothes. And of course that proves he's not invisible. Uh, the king of the universe or whatever he is. Pretty much point out. Oh, he could be. I guess he could be using the time leap technique. He explained what it is. I already explained it, so I'm not gonna do it again. But pretty much, Goku's like King Bulma tells them actually, isn't that against the law of the universe? And he's like, I don't want to die, so I'm not going to try to arrest him. Now, I have a small problem with it. The hit is from another universe. And the name of planet is in a dimension in between Universe 6 and 7. So why would Jocko have any authority as the Galactic Patrolman here in this universe? I just don't know how that works. And it just seems a little funky to me. But yeah, Goku goes into the ring and he begins his fight with Hit. For the first, like, a minute of the fight. Actually, no, he does bow respectively and everything. And to the first, like, a minute of the fight, I would say pretty much the thing. Goku getting a crack kicked out of him by hit, or 
hit out of him. But he, you know, he's losing pretty badly. And but then he then he pretty much tells hit. I found your attack. I found your weakness. I think I have blocked your attack. So they start fighting, and he block start blocking hit the attack. And he actually managed to make hit bleed. Now, this was actually the first time we've seen blood in Super, I believe, because, um, when Vegeta was fighting Hit, he had the blood too. So, this is the first time we've seen blood in Hit, in the, in the theory. And I think that is also including non red blood, such as Piccolo purple blood, but that is besides the point. The point is that it is really, really good stuff, and I really enjoy it. Now, there are a couple of things I want to say about this, though. At the very end of the fight, Goku tells Hit, I'm now going to use my full power. He had earlier told Hit he was not using his full power, but he didn't want to waste his stamina on transforming into a Super Saiyan or a Super Saiyan Blue. I'm assuming he was referring to Super Saiyan Blue, because we don't know if he mastered that form yet. Um, but we do know he mastered Super Saiyan during the uh, training with Gohan in the Time Chamber, or Room of Spirit in Time, during the Cell Arc. Now, I do want to talk about why I am not a big fan of Vegeta losing the hit. This seems to be a situation where it's pretty much like, Vegeta gets a lot of hype, it feels like there's going to be a pattern for now. Vegeta gets hyped up, he has a lot of epic stuff, and then he gets defeated instantaneously by the main villain, and then Goku gets to fight the guy. It seems like that's going to be how it works now, it's kind of annoying. I feel like they just do what other series do, kind of like what One Piece does with Luffy and Zoro, and just give Vegeta his own opponent just as strong as that guy. It makes there be two villains. Once for Goku to fight, once for Vegeta to fight. This way we get to see a, a great fight between both characters between with a really strong guy. But it's a it's a good fight. I enjoyed it. But I do of course need to talk about Monaka. Now this is where my negative opinion comes in. Trust me, I wouldn't do a review if I had no negative opinion. Well I would, but you know what I mean. There's always something bad. Nothing is perfect. Besides most, a couple a chapters of One Piece. Some of those are perfect, but nothing in Dragon Ball Super is perfect. Monaka is weak. I said it in my live reaction, and I'll say it again. If you were one of the people who said Monaka was weak, pat yourself on the back, go out, go out, buy yourself something to eat, buy yourself a cookie, congratulations. If you were right, and I'd also like to apologize to everybody who I said was wrong and argued with, not, not like it argued with, but it debated with, and you know, pretty much told them if you think Monaco was weak, you're a fool. There is no way Toy is that stupid. There's no way they would make someone as hyped up if Monaco was weak. I just like to tell you, I apologize because you know what, Monaco was weak. You were right. I was wrong, and I'll always, and I will always admit to it when I am wrong because I actually want that some credibility. But the point is. And that Monaco week, and so how do I feel about this? Well, I think it's freaking stupid as crap, and I freaking hate it. You wanna know why? Because just because you call it doesn't mean it's a good storytelling. Monaco has been hyped up for how long now? Since what? Episode 29? For over a third, nearly like a lot, maybe, no, it's like episode 28, I think. Yeah, it's episode 28 or 29, don't. No. Over like 12 to 11 weeks. We've been getting hyped for the character for a month now. Month. I'll have to go back after. I'm actually going to go and check right now. I'll be right back in a second. In the anime at least. The hype for Monaka began on Dragon Ball Super episode 28. Which, which aired on January 24th. Now. I want to point this out here. That is a long time. Now, it could have been episode 29, but it was one of those two episodes. Now, this thing, the reason it's a problem. You will hype up a character for that long, and it had to turn out to be weak. It just, it killed the hype. Now, all the people who were looking forward to Monaka fight, with their words. There were people that were big and fans and very excited for that, are going to be left very disappointed. And that is not good. 
Now, I would like to say, give an example here from a couple other theories, which was the best one I can think of, it was the fear that was brought up at the end of the Naruto series. Because before the end of the Naruto manga, before chapter, I would say, 692, I believe, Sasuke was shown to be a good guy now. And the real question was, Naruto's ending, where's Naruto versus Sasuke? Now, of course, Kishimoto, being a smart author, to introduce the whole killing the five Kage plotline, so he could have Naruto and Sasuke fight, because the fight was so hyped up. However, just sit down for a minute and imagine this. Imagine Naruto and Sasuke hadn't fought. Ten years of hype down the drain. Now, I know it's a lot different than this, but it's still the same concept. When you hype something up, you need to find a way to work it into the plot. You can't just hype something up and then not show it. There is no excuse. Kishimoto with five chapters did a really good Naruto vs. Sasuke fight in five chapters. Toriyama, you can figure out a way to make Monaka strong and give him a good fight. Now, who knows, maybe this is all some other scheme, but it appeared Monaka weak. I get why you're doing this. They want to try to add a sense of danger. Now, I do want to add something in that will will maybe add on to that sense of danger. Which is, after the 10 year gap at the end of the Dragon Ball manga, which is canon, by the way, like Bra and Pan, uh, and Oob, I would have pointed that out, but... After that 10 year gap, we never saw anything that took place off of planet Earth. So, you could theoretically say if Goku loses this tournament, if they lost this tournament, that ending could still happen. So that ending does not say the universe and Earth don't get squished out. I just wanted to point that out. Now, that is very important. But yeah, just I like the Naka thing was kind of annoying, but that's just my opinion. I mean, if I had to read the episode, I would give it a 9.5 out of 10. Because everything was perfect. The only thing that I think really killed it was the Monaka thing. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts on the episode in the comment section down below. And remember guys, above all else, now have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out.